anything then that's why we have some kind of problem okay let me then just to the smart view address so let me write the entry for attendance uh today this i think Okay, so I think probably you have seen the uh, attendance link, and we have a key now. Uh, I have already uploaded one material, but I need to share that material. Okay, because right now I am uh, taking class from the university, so I don't have that. Pen tablet with me, so that's why I have my scanned hand uh, handwritten note. So based on that, I'm going to discuss something. And uh, this is almost end of the syllabus, so you don't have to hurry. You just try to uh, simulate those kind of thing or run those type of programs and learn the concept behind it, and then try to implement. Okay, no problem. Now let me share my screen. You can also see from your drive. That means the link of your classroom. Hmm. Is my screen visible? Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So from here also, uh, 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 this is study material. From this link, you can also access this. Uh, you can directly access, or uh, you can. Get the share, the share screen. You can view a uh, look at the share screen that I have already presented. Actually, right now I, I don't have that kind of facility to write information uh, like before. So that's why this is my scanned handwritten note. So based on that, I am trying to discuss. Uh, may, maybe it will not be uh, too difficult for you to understand. Okay. Now. So far, I have discussed static memory allocation. That means INTA. Just uh, I had written this type of thing. Let's say INTA. Okay, let me download that thing. Otherwise, I cannot comment on it. Okay. Uh, Much easier. Hopefully, it is also visible to you. No problem. Now, whatever I have done so far, or whatever I have discussed, let's say INTA. Whatever we can, INTA means it's a a is an integer. It requires a four byte. Hmm. For Windows compiler. Windows based compiler is two byte, but for Linux based compiler is four byte. Assume it is four byte. Similarly, float a means uh, that is also four byte, but that kind of memory allocation is static. Why is it so? Because we at, at from the code we get to know about how much memory is required. Okay, try to understand. If I write INTA, okay, let us take on wrap work.
So I can see a if I write this thing. Uh, I think this type of this type of declaration is static because you can understand how much memory is required. Similarly, if I write a tail, what happens? It's nothing but an array, and you know that it's a contiguous uh, memory allotment, contiguous memory allocation. So, how much memory is required to run this array? Tell me. Forty. 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 Okay. Forty byte. Forty byte. If I write ten. Twenty. Twenty. N byte. N byte. N byte. Character consumes one byte. So that means from the source code, you can understand how much memory is required. Okay. That is this type of memory allocation is known as static memory allocation. Okay. But we are dealing with something else, which is known as runtime memory allocation or dynamic memory allocation. What kind of thing is this? That means user will supply. How much memory is required, and based on that, your compiler or your instruction will allocate the memory. There is no such way that the how much memory is required it will be known at the beginning. But the advantage over this is maybe uh, this is a small size memory. Maybe I require say this size, a big size memory. Hmm. But this much of memory is not required at all. While running the program, I see that sometimes 30 byte is required, sometimes 10 byte is required, sometimes uh, 80 byte is required. So, so all the time we are not, uh, we don't require thousand byte or the, the byte space. We are reserved for the array. But we have to do because. Uh, if it is less than, if it is more, let's say if it is nearly thousand, then we have to we need to check. So we don't have any way of uh, reducing the memory as per the requirement. We have to statically set some memory allocation depending on our application. But here actually in runtime memory allocation, based on user input, you can set. How much memory is required, and you can allocate how much memory is required. So, uh, if, you, if you notice the first line in C library function malloc is used to allocate the block of memory and size that memory is not known until the program runs. When program runs, user supplies input, and based on that input, the memory allocation is done. So, until program runs. It's not possible to allocate the memory, so memory allocation is delayed a little bit, and it is dependent on user input. So in this way, actually, we can efficiently uh, use the memory resource because memory is one of the resources. If you run too much, too many programs, and these these things are consuming memory, uh, unnecessary they are occupying memory. So this type of situation is not very good when you are. Was in a resource-restricted environment, so that's why dynamic memory allocation scheme comes in picture actually. And to use malloc, this is a library function. Based based on that, we use dynamic memory allocation. So use we have to use malloc, and that is available in this header file. That means Like stdio. dot a, like map. dot a, you have to include another header file. Okay, stdlib. dot a. So look at the if you look at the source code here. How am I producing dynamic array? Dynamic array is nothing but the uh, application of dynamic memory because. Uh, dynamic memory offers us that kind of facility that means we can uh, extend our memory as per the requirement, we can squeeze our memory as per the requirement. So, uh, let's say we are making such type of array. That means size of the array is not uh, given at the beginning. It, it is dependent on user input. So, 
this type of thing we do in this way. Hmm. So this is the usual error file stdio.h, but after that I have included stdliv.h. Okay. Now img star p star q. You know the meaning of this. Okay. These are nothing but pointer to integer. This is another pointer to integer. This is n capital n and this is i. These four variables are required. These two are the integer variables. Any problem to understand this line? Any problem to understand this line, declaration line? If you face any no, problem, no, okay, no problem. Now this li these two lines should not be any problem because just we are taking the value of n from inter, inter n and percent n percent n. Okay, you have taken it many times in your lab assignment. You have done it this type of thing many times, so no problem. Just n is the size actually that is taken from the inter. Okay, so now this line is very important. P equal to integer star mal of n star size of i n. Okay, actually everything you cannot understand at your stage because it requires type casting of a pointer, uh, concept of type casting. But somehow. Superficially, what you can understand that malloc within that malloc, its argument. This is the area where uh, we supply the argument for malloc. This is the area. Hmm. We supply argument for malloc, so it is nothing but the size of the memory that we are looking for. Okay. What do we, what does it mean by n star size of int size of actually it is an operator it returns the size of a data type if you don't know the what will be the size of data type then you have to write in this way you here you know that the integer each integer variable occupies four bytes so you can directly write n star four no problem okay. But maybe you are dealing with floating point, maybe you are dealing with some uh, structure we, 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 that is derived data type. Uh, you don't know what will be the size of it, or you don't bother to calculate it. Uh, uh, you, you simply pass that data type into size of operator, it will return the size. It, but never uh, write size of as a function, okay? Uh, it looks like a function, but it is nothing but an operator. Okay, so you have to write in this way: a star size of. Let's say you are uh, you require 40 bytes. Here actually 40 bytes, so you can directly supply 40 bytes here. But I have written in this way such that it, 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 the memory is computed based on the user input. Okay. Any problem to understand this? User input and data type. Any problem to understand? Sir, what, is the, sir, what is the keyboard you wrote before uh, n into size of int? Uh, this is not keyword actually. This is function malloc. Okay. M A L L O C memory allocation. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. It is, it is used for dynamic memory allocation. Okay. Okay. So, int start, this is called type casting. Uh, actually, at your stage, you will not understand it properly. Actually, malloc returns void pointer. Hmm. Since this is a int pointer to integer, pointer, this is also a pointer to integer because I have written in int star c. So, what is written by this part? It is void actually. So we have explicitly converted into integer pointer. Such that it is holding the value in integer pointer C. So yeah. that thing you will not understand right now properly. Hmm. Uh, but somehow this is the way we allocate memory. Okay, try the So P equal to 
something in the after if you are dealing with pointer to floating point then if you have to write you have to declare here a float star p and p equal to float star nal of n star size of float now i have already discussed this issue compile time memory allocation or static allocation that means the size of memory size of allocated memory known before the program runs i think what i have discussed here actually this is nothing but the example of static memory allocation because from your source code you can understand how much memory is allocated but for dynamic memory it's not possible until in the supply in the So that is one of the issues I am going to discuss now. The next part is you have the pointer to that memory. So I think it looks like this. Let's say this is your chunk of memory, and that is pointed by C. Okay, C contains the address of C. Now you, you look at the loop here. I equal to zero. Q equal to P. I. That means I set. Okay. Just you, you forget about this part first. I equal to zero. I less than n and I plus plus. What does it mean by it? I runs from zero to n minus one. Is it? Now. As your size, number of integers you are taking from the user, it is n, and you, value of the n you don't know. That is given by the user. So the purpose of this loop is to run n times. Okay, is to repeat the instruction n times. Okay. Now in the meantime, we Actually, set q equal to p. That means we use another pointer to point the base address of this array. Q. Okay. Now, as i increments, as the loop runs, we have to say that it becomes q plus plus. Okay. So what happens? Initially, q equal to p. Then, i i becomes one. Q becomes q will point the next address. Actually, this part is segmented. I think it's like an array. It's a collection of integers. So q will point here next. When q increments, it will point here. Next, it will point here. So in this way, actually, it gradually uh, goes forward. And when i becomes n minus one, then the loop stops. I think loop terminates. And that is our purpose. That q starts from zero to n minus 1 actually initial location then next location then next location in this way actually q also goes forward hmm. and while it goes at the same time it scan it reads the input from user okay can as possibly q that means hmm, let's say we are taking some value from user and putting into that part okay So that kind of thing. While you write program in your lab, you must provide one printed instruction. Otherwise, you will not, uh, you cannot understand properly when to uh, when to actually um, supply data. Hmm. So before that, you will write printed uh, entire your data like that. Okay, no problem. I haven't written it because. This is the core instruction. Before that, you can write anything for your better understanding. And similarly, you look at the same loop. I equal to zero. Q equal to p. Actually, Q is set to the first location of the array. 
and then as I increment, Q also increments. So similarly, I am printing. So you, you, one thing you notice that here I, I have written Q, but here I have written star Q. Can you tell me why is these two different? Why are these two different? Can you tell me? Why is it only Q and why is it only star? Sir, Q stores address of Exactly, exactly. Q, Q holds the address. And when I write scan a person elects it, it's a normal integer variable. We have to write the address of it. M person A, M person B, M person A, like that. Here actually it stores the address. Can we write M person Q? No, M person Q means address of the pointer. That is not required. I am actually supplying the address of this variable. Address of the pointer is not required. Yes, yes I got it. That's why you have to write only Q. Q means address here. Q is a pointer. Okay. And star Q means the content of No, it's not content. Uh, it's the content at that address. That is held by the Q. Or that is available in the Q. So that's why you, you never do this type of mistake. Don't get confused. Why is it Q and why is it star Q? Okay, better erase that part. It's not required. Similarly, there is another function known as calloc. Okay. If you look at the argument, style of supplying argument, here we require two arguments, n comma size of int, and here we are supplying n star size of int. Actually, here number of argument is one, just the size. And this, as the size comes in, Two components that size supplied one something is supplied by the user, another is the size of the data type. So we have multiplied it, but here we don't need to multiply, we separately supply these two. Okay, this is the thing thing that's based difference. Okay, there are other differences available. The first of all, what I have already discussed, takes one argument. It takes actually two arguments. It allocates single block of memory, malloc. That's why we have to supply only single argument. And it allocates multiple blocks of memory. Okay. Allocates memory in contiguous form. And it also allocates uh, in contiguous form, but if not available, it, it actually separates the memory. It, it takes a different place. And default initialized value is garbage here, but for using Calo, default initial value is zero. So these are some differences between Calo and Calo. I, I think you can remember the summary of this material is that what is the difference between static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation, how do we accomplish dynamic memory allocation, what are the library functions required, what are the uh, header file, what is the header file required for it, uh, and what is the difference between calloc and Probably you can follow this. I think at your level this much is enough. Now, we will move into another important issue known as file system. I have already discussed some part of it in last lecture. So, something 
you have to we can characterize file system in this way actually it's a logical limit of storage defined by or prepared by operating system from physical storage that's why if we open up cabinet you cannot find any file system it's nothing but the electronic devices but when we actually When we start our PC, we find that collection of files. Actually, it's nothing but the mapping from physical storage to logical storage. So, file cannot be available physically, it exists logically. So, that's why you, you may think of it's a logical storage unit defined by operating system from physical. Now, what we do usually to handle file, the two basic operations are reading and writing. Okay, we can read, we can open a file for reading, and we can write also file. See, if you forget about the key programming and different things, just now, uh, let's say I have several files here. Here, this is one of the files. This is one of the files. I can open that file. I can read something, whatever. Else. Here actually I am reading this file. I am going to access the content of this file. Similarly, I can also I am also writing on this file or in this file. So I can write anything in this file. So file is basically used for writing and reading. Uh, why is it required? Because in memory based programming, you know when main memory is volatile in nature, so it is power up. The um, content is lost, but sometimes some complex calculation. For some complex calculation, uh, you need to save your data, and not only that, your size of your memory is very limited. Maybe uh, you have to deal with volume of data, so that's why you need to you need some separate unit that will store a huge volume of data, and that storage should be persistent. It should not be temporary. Okay. So for that reason, actually, we use file system. These two are the basic right operations for files reading and writing. But before that, whatever you have to do with the file, you have to open a file. Without opening, can you read a file? I don't think so. Same, same it is true for writing. Without opening, I cannot write. And after that, it is customary. It is custom to close the file. It is definitely you need to close the file, but sometimes we leave it. We do not close it, and that is closed by the operating system. That is different issue. But these are the four basic operations related to file system. One is opening file, reading data from file, writing data into a file, and closing it. Any problem to understand so far? Any problem to understand this? Sir, what is file if you can explain once again? Uh, what is file? I just have already written here. It's a logical limit of storage. That means, what you write something. Let's say you type your address and you uh, store it in a file or like that. And if you open your cabinet, computer cabinet, and try to find where I have written that address, is it possible for you to find it? No, sir. Because you cannot read the electronic disk, you cannot read, uh, read optical disk, magnetic disk, uh, your drive. That is something the information is stored electronically. At what you are, uh, what you can access from your computer, it's a logical unit of storage. The same thing is available in your physical storage because uh, there must, it must be stored somewhere in your PC. Otherwise, how can you access? So let's say you have kept a movie file in your smartphone or PC, whatever. So it must be available somewhere in your PC. Otherwise, how can you access that? Location is not known as physical storage. Okay, but what if you open your computer system physically? You cannot find it because you cannot read 
the file uh, you cannot read the information physically that's why uh, it is prepared by operating system a logical unit against the physical storage is prepared by the operating system that is known as file system in file we write something in file we can read it from uh, whatever but actually we are reading physical storage yes sir understood so same thing uh, while you open a file this is the syntax for opening a file f i l e star s actually what i what i just have discussed i n t star c if i write this type of thing so sorry If I write int star c, then what does it mean? It's a pointer to integer. Similarly, if I write f i l e star f c, then what does it mean? Pointer to file. Ah, the there is little bit of misconception. It's not pointed to file. It's pointed to file structure. File is not a file. It's a pointed to file structure that contains real file pointer. Okay. Pointer to structure file. Okay, and file contains file pointer. Understood? Why is it required? Because uh, there are some security issues related to file system. So users are not directly allowed to use the file for opening and closing. So that's why a, a level of indirection is created. Pointer to struct file and file it contains pointer. I think this diagram is little. I, I it's not properly scanned, but uh, somehow we try, we try to understand. Let's say this, this is your memory, and your program is available inside the memory. This is a file structure. File is a structure. It contains file pointer. And it is connected to file available in secondary disk. Okay. Now, when you are making connection with FP and FILE, so through FP you can access your real file that is available in secondary disk. Okay. Understood or not? Understood or not? Yes, sir. So, in your viva or interview, whatever, whatever, you never say that it's a pointer to file. Okay, it's a pointer to structure file. The file contains file pointer. So, it it will be incorrect that it is pointer to file. Okay. Now this is the instruction or this is the library function for opening a file. Let's say your file name is abc dot txt. It's a text file. And what is this? I will explain later. Sp equal to a open within double quote. These are double quote. Abc dot txt. That means file name, comma the mode file opening mode. It is double for R. Here actually I have used the read mode. Uh, there are many, there are many different modes are available. I have already used the read mode. What is the purpose of read mode for reading information? I, I am not allowed to write if I open something in read. Okay. 
So this is the way we open a file f equal to a open then name of the file within double quote comma file opening mode. Okay. Actually, for opening, here I have written the explanation also. We set up a link between program and operating system. The link is a structure known as FILE and defined in header HTTP.h. So, that thing we include by default. We usually, and there are many library functions that are associated with HTTP.h. That's why it is available at the beginning. So that is the that header this header file is required for using FIL. Now it's a type of link that is created. That means your that variable SP to FIL structure to real file to its pointer and pointer to the real file that is available in the link. So that kind of link is prepared. So in our program, we will use FP only, FP or star FP. But it will access the real file that is available in the system. Okay. And F open, this, this line is very important. F open searches on the disk for the file to be open. If the file is present, it loads the file from the disk to memory, okay. which brings the file in onto the uh, into the memory because memory the CPU can access only the memory primary memory, and if the file is very big, it loads the file part by part because usually second size of secondary memory, size of file, this type of things are uh, actually more than your the size allocated for operation in memory. So that's why sometimes you have to load something big, even bigger than the size of memory, main memory. So it loads by your part by part. If file is absent, then F open returns null. Null is a macro that is defined. I have already explained what macro is. So sometimes we check that. Uh, in here, the file represents the code of the program. File file means which and file? FILE or the what we are for opening that thing. Okay, this thing. Yes. And uh, this thing is not a source code. This thing may be anything, whatever. Source code inside your source code, you have to write this. For the source code is used for writing or uh, opening a file. It's a C program. We are going to develop a C program for handling file. That means another file will be created where we write some information or read some information from. Okay. So I, I better uh, actually I don't have any option for any type of visualization. So that's why I'm facing a little bit of problem. So let's say this is your source code. Okay, and another file is available. Let's say this is abc dot dot txt, and this is let's say uh, a dot c. This is a c file, a dot c. Using uh, by running this source code, you can handle this file or access this file for reading and writing. This is our mechanism. Understood? So it is you like mean, hyperlinking in web. We do no, that. No, no, no. It's not hyperlinking. Actually, when you uh, type some, when you try to access some file, that is for open a file. Let's say uh, I open this file. Hmm. I open this file for some purpose, this file for some purpose. So actually behind that, some instruction run for opening it, for writing it. We don't have to think about it because operating system so actually it abstracts 
that kind of thing. It hides that kind of thing. But here actually, we are going to learn what kind of operations are going on when we are attempting to open some file or close some file, write some file, read, reading from a file like that. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is our source code, normal source code. For just for writing array, structure, string, whatever. And now we are dealing with file because but file requires some additional storage that is available in storage. So this part is not in memory. While running this program, it should be brought into the memory. But usually this file resides in secondary memory, not in primary memory. But this program runs in time. Okay. Yes, sir. So actually, little bit it will be little bit confusing, and uh, I don't have the way to visualize right now. So that's why it is a problem. And uh, before discussing this type of thing, I let me uh, discuss the opposite operation. Closing a file, F close within bracket F. Okay. All the links to the file are broken, buffer associated to the file are removed from the memory. Okay. That means some space is reserved for file operation that is also deallocated. Just you try to notice these two syntax. Uh, a file star fp, this is the declaration of fp. Now, fp equal to f open. While you write this, you have to supply name of the file you are going to open and the mode that is purpose of opening reading, writing, or both, or whatever. There are many varieties of file opening modes there. So, and but while closing, you don't have to supply all this. If you supply only the name of the pointer, pointer to FILE, not file, pointer to FILE, then it will be closed. That means the link is broken. You, you cannot access uh, your file abc.txt using it. Okay. So these two are the basic operations because without opening and closing, you cannot do anything. Now, reading data from file and writing data into file. Okay. That is, these two are the very basic operations. We do it, but how do we do it using C program? But before that, we have to know different file opening modes. I have listed. Uh, some file opening modes, but other than there are many different file opening modes. These are used for mainly opening text files, but there are some other complex type of files, for example, image file that require different modes. So, I am not uh, going to discuss this type of configuration because that is not required for your exam also. Uh, there, so, just you know about some basic notes for opening text files. Uh, I have already used it. That is open file for reading only. And if file does not exist, then F open. F open means the library instruction or the library function for opening file. I think you can remember this. F open returns null. So you can also check that if F open uh, equal to uh, within bracket you supply the argument equal to equal to null. Then you can conclude that uh, file of file does not exist or like that. So this is the test to check that file exists or not. Sometimes we have to do it. That uh, let's say I am trying to read a file which does not exist. So how do we test it in this? Way. Similarly, W actually mode is used for opening file for writing one. Just like reading, you can use for writing. That means from your C program, you can supply some information that will be written into some file. Okay. If file exists, 
the contents are overwritten that means let's say i have the, I, the file exists already exists it is not create it is not going to be created newly so so whatever be the content it will be it will be erased as a new content will be written okay that is one of the features here and if file does not exist a new file is created okay i think you know about it and that is not possible for reading that is possible only for writing any problem to understand this any problem to understand this no sir no okay if unable to open a file then it returns null maybe it exists but it is corrupted or it cannot be accessed due to some permission or whatever so it returns null okay. o mode sorry it is not o it is a it should be a append mode it should not go so correct it is open the file for appending or adding data what is the difference between w and a in w actually if file exists the contents are overwritten but here actually the contents are not overwritten if file exists then data are added to it okay so let's say file has some piece of information at the beginning if you use the right w mode so everything will be empty and you will write the new information there but here actually the you will you, you have the facility for keeping the available information and you will start writing your program will start writing after that maybe some application maybe you have to frequently open the file and take data for writing and if if some after some time you need to process the data after again you have to open the file and then you have to write it without erasing the previous one so under that scenario you have to use append okay. if you face any problem to understand please tell me okay then these are other three modes r plus w plus a plus r plus is used for opening file for reading and writing both okay and w plus is for writing and reading the content after writing okay and a plus is almost same as w plus but you know the difference between w and a and similarly is the difference is same here also between w plus and a plus so file open for appending and reading so you if you use r plus you can read the content and based on reading you can write the content but if you use w plus the file will be open for writing and after writing you can read the content but you can all without using this mode you can also do this but you have to uh, open the file and then close the file then you have to open for writing mode in this way actually you have to many times open and close the file so if you know the six mode i think this is enough for your exam and for your level actually but other than there are some other complex modes available for reading different types of files now i have already discussed how to close now this is the program for copying file information okay file copy program copy the purpose of it is 
copies the content of a file into another file. Let's say this is a file, and this is another file. So whatever available here, you like to copy. What we do in Windows, we we just select, right click, copy, and paste. Actually, the operation is similar, but we have to do it using C programming because in Windows, such type of operation runs, but in that type of thing is totally hidden. We cannot see what is going on. You know only how to copy and paste, but here actually. Some, uh, you have to deal with some underlying instruction or the sequence of instruction needed for copying. Now, for copy, you need to read the content of a file, write data into a file, okay, so this is not the file copy program, this is some other instructions. Uh, just know about these two, a printer and a scanner. Can you tell me what is the purpose of printer and scanner? You have used it many times. Can you tell me? Not a printer, a scanner. Only printer and scanner. Haven't you used it in your library? Sir, scanner accepts input. That is okay. Scanner takes input from user and printer. Sir, it prints. Sir, output. To this output. output. Sir, printer prints. Huh. Printer prints. Then prints where? Prints on the console. The data got from scanner. Prints on the terminal, okay. okay. Prints on the terminal, okay. Purpose of printable scanning is same, and here also the purpose of a printed and a scanning is same. But a printed actually prints data into file. So you cannot see the data. Just like printed, you cannot see the data. It will be written into the file. You have to open the file for to see if the data is properly written or not. Similarly, a scanner is something you read data from file. Okay. So I better write. Is there any uh, illustration of this? No one. I better write it. You have to know the syntax of these two. For instance, sorry, in data or write data, whatever, into file. So here actually the A stands for file. Okay. If you use normal printer, it will read it from console. Sorry, normal scanner, it will read it from console or terminal, whatever. But if you use A scanner, it will read information from file. Any problem to understand the difference? No, sir. No. 
Now you, you have to you know how to apply these two methods. Let's say these two are the files a dot txt b dot txt. Okay. So this is the source file and this is the target one. Actually, if the document is not properly scanned, right? There is some problem with this kind of thing. You can directly open from your drive, no problem. If there is some visibility problem. So a dot txt it contains some information that will be copied into b dot txt. So now. Uh, I think you are familiar with this instruction. F I L E star F A star F. Actually, here we require two pointers. Pointer to F I L E. One for source file, another for target file. Okay. If you face any doubt, please inform me. Okay. Because these instructions are not very easy at the beginning. For if you are uh, learning it for the first time, maybe you have some confusion regarding this type of thing. Okay. Now, C H A R C H A R C H. I think you know already. It's a character variable. Okay. Now, actually, my target is to read character by character. Okay. Character by One character we read from a dot txt and we will place it into b dot txt. Similarly, we will read another character from a dot txt, place it into b dot txt. Okay. Now tell me, in which mode I should open a and which mode I should open b? Sir, B in reading mode. B should be in writing mode, not in reading mode, because B is the target here. You are reading from A and writing into B, so that's why A should be in read mode and B should be in write mode. Any problem? No, sir. No. So same thing we have done it. F is equal to F open A dot txt R. You know what does it mean by it? If F is equal to equal to null, tell me what is the meaning of this instruction? What is the meaning? To understand the meaning, you have to understand this line. This line. If file does not exist, then F open return null. Then checking that if file exists or not. Okay. That should be the first guide there. I, I I should not copy from a file which does not exist. It is not possible also. So that's why if f is equal to equal to null, then put it or print a percentage, you can or whatever you like to use. Cannot open so. Try to understand and tell me uh, if it is okay or not. Okay. As you may have understood that F S is associated to A dot T X T, so F S equal to equal to null. It actually checks if A dot T X T exists or not. So if it is null, really it does not exist, so it cannot open the source file. Okay. That is the meaning of this. And F T equal to F open similarly B dot T X T. This is right mode. We have already uh, explained why is it. 
you have already explained this. Okay. Why is this right mode? Uh, so if F T equal to equal to null, same thing, same similar type of setting we are doing it for also. It cannot open the target file. If file does not exist, it's not a problem. You can create one file and then put the information. But due to some other reason, let's say it is not permitted for opening or it's corrupted or like that. So under that kind of situation, uh, uh, this type of thing is return null and you have to also check it. Now, this function, we look at this function, it get p. Okay. Actually, it, it reads character from file. I have written the definition uh, use of this library function. It reads character from file. Okay. So, f get p, fs means it reads character from fs. That means file associated to fs. fs means a dot key. FS is connected to F A dot key. Similarly, while C A is not equal to hand, this this we have to understand it. This is another macro E O F like F I L. It implies end of file. That means you have to check that all characters have been copied or not, or if it does not have any character, let's say one, one file is completely blank, so how can you copy? So, this type of, you have to check it to POH. So, if, let's say you have taken one character from this file, and if this is completely blank, the first character will be EOS. So, while if is not equal to EOS, then put F put C. Actually, this function actually does the opposite of F get. It writes character into a file. Okay. So F put C is CH. CH means the character you have collected from F that you are going to put into FT. FT means FT is associated to P dot T. So actually here you will access this through fs and you will access this to ft now next you are going to read the next character and this thing will go on and on until the in the file is reached so in this way actually you will completely copy the content of one file into another. Any problem to understand it? No sir. No. How much time is left? How much time is left? One minute. One minute? One minute. Yes sir. <laughs> I must finish here. Uh, next day I will discuss the rest of the instruction. Now, F close FS, F close FT. I think you know the meaning of this. Closing file, that is breaking the link that is associated with FS and FT. Okay. So, this file, you must try this program in your lab or at your home, whatever, uh, such that you will understand the uh, meaning of this instruction. Okay. And next day I will discuss the use of F printer and F -tab. Okay. So for the time being, you may leave. Hello, sir. <coughs> Hmm. Sir, uh, I got a syllabus here. Here, sir, stack and heaps, linking, loading concept, finding execution time. Is this in our syllabus? I don't think stack, heap, this type of things are uh, part of data structure. And uh, in your 
syllabus I think it is mostly oriented to key basic key programming. So this type of things should not be in your syllabus. Okay, sir. I think this is old. Old. Maybe. I don't know about it. Okay, sir. Currently, sir, structure can is you available. Please? If somebody likes to extend the structure at uh, different applications, try to learn uh, different application of structure, then he or that person may go for learning this type of key and tag type of thing. But I don't think uh, these things are available in detail in your syllabus. Hello, sir. Can you please share the handwritten notes in the Google Classroom? Already, already I have done it. Already I have done it. Just if okay. you open that study material, uh, you will find that dynamic memory plus five. So, okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.